I want the video to be very short and I want to upload it on YouTube as well. So let me just do it this way. Now, the idea is to accept some values from the, to build a grep replica. Okay. If you work with Linux, you must be familiar with grep to allow you to go into a file, let's say a text file, and then search for a particular text, right? Let's say a text file with a bunch of names. You can go in there and then search for a very simple uh, text and get back the results. It also have different flags that you, you could use. So this is a very straightforward implementation to show you how you could approach solving that problem. So I've using this given one and then approach, right? So I say given one, we have some arguments from the terminal. And I also focused on building it in such a way that it doesn't matter where the, it's not going to be an issue where you get the data from. You might even be getting the data from the API, from an API or something. Okay. So, let me. Okay. Sorry, I have to fix my audio. Yeah, so now let me walk you through what I already have. So after breaking it down, get the argument from the terminal or from whatever source you have and then get the file name. So the idea is this. If you go to, let me show you a few things. Okay. So you see where I'm coming from. So if you come in here and that and get arguments, environmental arguments, you want to be able to accept some argument from the terminal. So let's say we have, we want to get the arguments. You can use from the standard library. You can get um, the environment variable and then get arguments from there. Okay. So this will usually return a vector. So let's just we still have to unpack it, but let me print that to the terminal to show you what it will look like. So ax is, let me just print it that way. Supposed to be plural, so let's just make it plural. I hope my audio is very fine. Okay. So let's, let me see if I can get away with printing it this way. Or in fact, let me use the debug macro so that it will be, you're going to see what it looks like. Holy. Oh, let me print both of them. So if I run cargo run. You will see what we have here. So this is the first print line we have. Okay. It says argument is equal to this. It doesn't appear very well here, but if you look at it here, you see that it's, it actually looks like a, a constructor. So this is actually a collection, but this is actually an iterator. We can just collect that to convert it to a construct, um, a collection. And uh, whenever you do this, you must specify, you must tell Rust what kind of collection is going to be. Let's say, let's just make it a collection of string. Okay, and then we we'll run that code again. Yeah, you can see it makes a lot of sense now. Looks like an array, but it's actually a vector of strings. This first uh, parameter, this first um, value will always be there. Okay, at index zero, it will always be there. This is basically our. Uh, our binary you can see it here if we go to our project and you go to targets you can see inside the bug which is target slash the box slash command line app so this is our binary that we can run so that is what it will give you back here now watch what will happen when we pass some environmental arguments now in rust in order to pass some environmental argument in such a way that rust is not going to see it i mean cargo is not going to see it as part of its own flag you use this double hyphen 
and then you can pass the argument let's say we want to since you are trying to read something from a file let's say we give you the name you actually have um, a file here called names.tsx um, txt which is just a text file with a bunch of country names okay so you can you want to be able to give it that name so okay, you can say cargo run we we'll give it the name of the file let's say we we'll say names.txt and then we we'll give it what to search for let's say we want to search inside this file we want to search for japan for example you can just type in japan okay and um, don't forget our double hyphen and now when we run that code you can see that in this print line we have here in this debug macro that we have used in printing this we got this stuff back this is now a vector with that environmental variable we passed so a name and the name of the file and then what we want to search so i hope that is clear enough so we want to be able to get that from the command line or from anywhere and then go into the file we want to search for and then search for what we need to search what we need to search in that file according to what the user provided so that is the idea now in order to build something like this and keep it separate, organize it in a very good way. I did a video about a code organization in Rust in YouTube. You should check out the uh, my channel, Daily Dose of Rust Language on YouTube. I explained that in detail, how you can organize your code and how you can use library crates. So we have a library crate right here. Okay, All you have to do is to create, to create a library crate is to type in cargo new. And then you provide the lib uh, flag and then type in the name of the the name of the library create you want to you want to create so we've already done that and that gave us this my search i just called it my search okay so inside here since it's a library create you're going to see this src folder and inside here you will see this libs.rs folder okay and this is here we're going to write our code so i'm basically writing the whole code inside here we can then import it from our binary creator and be able to use it from there. Now, I've seen you what I did here. So, um, this is a very good way to break down a problem before you start solving it. Because it's not just about writing code, it's about solving a problem at the end, at the end of the day. So, once you're breaking it down to its logical conclusion, it will make it a lot easier for you to solve. I don't just break it down this way. I also uh, went through a process of solving it. Okay, so I build a lot of WordPress plugins for businesses around the world. I've covered about 12% uh, of uh, the countries of the world. So premium WordPress plugins for businesses. Okay, I've been doing that for years. This is also part of the ways I do that, including other softwares like Next.js softwares and uh, uh, React.js web apps. I usually break things down this way and do a very good work detail that I will send the client so that they will go through. Once they read this stuff, okay, they will be convinced. They will make sure, okay, that will make sure that what you are building is what they want exactly. So if they don't agree with any of this, it will make the, um, they can then let you know, and you can, of course, fix fix it and then send it back to them for them to uh, agree on before you go on. And this is the process I went through. We need a process to read stuff from the command line, okay, from the terminal. And whatever we're going to get will be converted to a vector. That is why I showed you uh, what we get back from the environmental argument, okay. And then once we read it from the terminal, we verify that the value is actually greater than one, because it's possible. You saw when we run the code the first time that we got just this because we did not provide any environmental variable. Okay, and when we do that, we got three values. So we have to make sure that whatever vector we are getting must have up to three values. Okay, and that is the idea. And then, thirdly, we get the search query and the content. So how we've structured it, the name of the file should come first, and then the file, the text we want to search for. Okay, then, fourthly, we start looping through this stuff. We get the content just read the stuff inside this text file of course make sure that that file exists and then search for this text 
Now, conveniently, Rust has uh, some a method in the strength uh, class that helps us to do that. And this is the process I started with. Okay. So, first, I created this uh, mod, uh, this module called test. Okay. And annotated it with this uh, configuration attributes and gave it this configuration uh, option called test. And then I imported everything we have in this uh, sort of global parent scope inside here by using the super. Okay, asterisk. So this will import, it's, a white, it's like a white card that will import everything we have there. Why super means like parent. So the parent where this uh, mod is, which is this leave.rs file. And then wrote this test first. So I like to go to the crux of the application and the crux is just being able to search a particular text inside a bunch of text that is what it all comes down to no matter where you get the text no matter the, the file you are searching in you still read the text and then search through them that was why i wrote this test first so i like to start from the higher level okay first i got a text here a variable and start japan in it and then got from here all this file read it and then stored it in this variable since you are writing a unit test you have to keep it focused on this function okay and not have to do other things like trying to read from a file uh, trying to do any other side effect uh, involve any other side effect inside the, the test that is why we got a text because that is what we're going to get at the end of the day and then we call this search function at the point I wrote this text, test uh, this search function doesn't exist yet, and that's the whole idea of test-driven development. Okay, we expect that we can call this test, this search, this search function, which the the query and also the text to search, right? And then I later decided to instead of trying to find out which we go first, the name or the the query or the text, we could just pass some sort of config to it and that led us to create this uh, search config struct here yeah, you can see up here which will accept a query and a text i could use a tuple in this case but the problem with tuples is that it's not named the fields are not named so it will still cause some level of confusion but since we have a, a struct here that will make it a lot easier for us Okay, so we can get a simple configuration that we can pass to this search function. Once it accepts it, it will know how to process it and use what is inside there. And that will also help us to avoid having to do some validation inside this search. Okay, if we are setting the query and the content inside here or the text inside here, it means that we still have to check to make sure that we have some values inside that content because we can't be searching for um you need to make sure that the file name is this or to make sure that the text has more than uh has a length that is greater than zero or maybe do any other sanitization we might, we might want to do but receiving this configuration uh instance of this configuration start uh this configuration struct makes it a lot easier for us to handle okay so now that we've created it we also have to think about how to construct this search config struct that is why we created this associator function called new right here ensure that the screen is very large is very large maybe i can zoom in a little bit like that okay so we have that was why i created this as a new associator function inside an implementation block for this struct okay you can see i called it new i made it public so that we can use it from somewhere else now this new associated function will now deal with accepting the values and constructing the search config okay to construct it and then return it and that way we'll get an instance of this search config and we can then pass it to this search function now by the time i'm doing i was doing this this search function doesn't exist yet and then we've just created this search config struct and configured it okay now it was time to create this search uh, function 
and the idea is to write just a few code to um, get the code to break okay and then once the code is read or the you've run the code and then the test did not work since you've not implemented some of these then you write a, just a very few code to get it to pass once it passed then you can then refactor it to do the correct implementation let me show you what the search file what the search function looks like okay so it's a very simple function we are setting the config which will be an instance of this search config i will show i'm going to explain what this means in a in a little bit and then here since we are expecting to return a vector okay because each line of the text we find inside this bunch of text you have to return that line so that is why we are returning we, we, we are starting it inside a vector we can store it inside an array because an array has we have a specified default length so but a vector can grow and shrink so that is why we are using a vector and when we are done we can then return it and all we are doing here is getting the the text and then breaking it down into lines which will return an iterator and then convert that iterator to a collection which you can then look through i still go into more details about iterators and uh, collections later on okay but iterators is what made collection make uh, collections possible okay so but it's a it's a it's a, a very different topic you could see that we did something similar to to this what we call ax we have to convert it to a collection first the collection is basically like a vector in fact it's part of the, the data structure i could show you in the documentation but i want this video to be very short okay but i will still go into more details if you need more explanation do let me know in the comment section okay so I hope that the video is still going okay. now all we did is to get the lines so luckily for us rust has a very convenient tool of getting lines from if you give it a bunch of text if you have a bunch of text inside a string object for example or even a string slice you can get lines from those texts okay so what it will do basically is it will pick those text and look for new line characters which is a backslash and an n and then it will convert each of those the characters between those new line characters into lines and then it will return the lines we we'll convert it to a collection and then we are now able to look through it with the for this uh, for expression okay so while looking through for each line we we'll use the contents uh, parameter this contains method we call it on this string so a string object we have or even a string slice we have a lot of method we can call in it you can call find we can call contents like we are doing here to see if it contains that particular text okay so if it's a very convenient method if it does we we'll push that line inside the line the result that we are going to return and after that we we'll return it so it's something very simple okay you can see that when we run this text we are supposed to find japan we are now using this assertion from a uh, macro okay we are saying assert equals so checking that the what will return from result will be a vector that will contain japan because that is essentially what we are searching for if that was not the case the test is going to fail now in order to run that test since it's in a separate library we have to use the either the so if i run cargo test iphone help to give you the flags you could use so if you are in a workspace we could use this workspace flag um this all uh, flag is now deprecated so don't use it if you're in a workspace use this workspace or uh, you can use this package flag so that is what i, I will use here so i can 
I could say cargo test since you have, we want to run the test and we provide slash p this hyphen p to indicate the package we want to run that would be this library create and it's called my search so that is all I'm, I'm going to provide my search okay and once I run that test you can see that the all the tests that's been run and this particular test is called test search and you can see it here okay if we made if the function this search function was not working properly let's say we change this to something else like this and then run it cargo test package my search my search you see that the test will fail and the particular test that failed was this test search okay you can see that the, on the left side we had japan 2 which is exactly what is here and then on the wrong, on the right hand side from search we've got japan so this way you will get this test you will get that hey something is going wrong and you can then fix it and, and run the test again and there you go all the tests passed again so this makes sense now the idea of unit test is to make it easy for you so that later on i no longer have to do test these things uh physically again because i know 